Good morning, everyone. Can you hear my voice? Yes. Yes, I can. I will start my presentation because I don't know how to start. So I, I, I will start. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Yi Cui from China Agricultural University. It is my honor to be here to join the AEA annual meeting. The topic of my presentation is alcohol consumption and mild cognitive impairment, a Mandalian randomization study from the rural China. The co-author of this research are Professor Wei Si, Professor Chen Zhu, and the Professor Qi Ran Zhao. So, okay. Dementia has been a major public health problem because more and more people are getting dementia and the combined cost of health care and the loss of earning due to the dementia is also high. A uh, mild cognitive impair impairment MCI represents the preclinical translational stage between the healthy aging and the dementia. MCI is believed to precede dementia as an earlier state. There are many studies that have analyzed the risk factor associated with MCI, such as age, gender, educational level, and the cardiovascular risk factors. Alcohol consumption is considered a possible risk factor for MCI. Uh, China is a country with a large production and the consumption of alcohol. Alcohol abuse and dependence are common disorder among the rural China. The relationship between the alcohol intake and MCI is still controversial. Some studies found drink alcohol were likely to have MCI. Other studies indicate light, moderate alcohol drinking decreased the risk for MCI. There are some studies found no significant association between the alcohol intake and the incidence of MCI. There is a barely no study to investigate effect of alcohol consumption on MCI in China, especially in rural China. Uh, it is difficult to estimate the coral impact of alcohol consumption and MCI using the observational data because observed MCI effect may be a form of reverse causation and the observed effect might be due to the confounding factors such as social, economic, postation, diet, or other health-related behavior. The coral nature of association beyond observed correlation must be investigated in order to fully evaluate the benefit or harm of alcohol use. So our study aims to investigate the coral influence of alcohol consumption on MCI by using Mendelian randomization analysis. This study used a cross-section dataset which collected in rural China in 2090. A total of 1,966 1, observations were collected. 235 of which were genotyped. The survey collects the personal alcohol consumption information, measure the MCI genotyping. Um, the personal and family level information is also collected. Uh, we investigate the frequency and the intensity of, of alcohol consumption behavior from the three aspects. First, we conduct a binary measurement of whether the respondent drunk or not. Second, we ask the participants the drink frequency of the three kind of Chinese common alcohol drinks, beer, wine, and liquor during the past 13 days. Third, we calculate weekly ethanol consumption according to the information of the drink frequency and the alcohol content of the each alcohol drinks. MCI evaluation used the Minicog. Minicog combined the clock drawing task and the three word memory into a tool to access MCI. Uh, the subject recalling none of the word we uh, were classed as MCI. Uh, those recalling all of the three words uh, were classed as none of MCI. Those clock those recalling one or two words were classed based on the CDT test. One mil saliva sample were collected for genotyping in professional test tube. 
We send this tube to gene company, which will analyze the gene information to us. Uh, we use multivariable linear regression to estimate the correlation between the alcohol consumption and MCI. Uh, use the Mendelian regression analysis to evaluate the causal relationship between the alcohol consumption and the MCI. Use the two-stage list scores. MCI is a coral research design which uses the random allocation of genes at meiosis in humans, resembling the random assignment into treatment group in RCT. ALDH2 genes encode azomy in void in acinal multiplexin pathway, which can change the magplectic balance of as I tell they're high in human body and affects alcohol consumption. The enzyme activity are largely determined by the genome taps and the number of the effect alleles in ALDH2 genes. Uh, this figure illustrates the design of MR uh, in our study the random assignment of A alleles of ALDH2 at constipation uh, when the sample with the A alleles was the A alleles carriers he is a treatment group. The non-A alleles carriers was control group. The equal confounders between the group and the outcome compared between the group is our result. Uh, table 1a and table 1b report the basic characteristic of the total sample and the genetic sample. As can be seen from the table 1a, 34% uh, of res respondents are in general genetic sample or A allele carriers, uh, and 65% uh, were non A allele carriers. Uh, by comparing table 1a and table 1b, it can be seen that there was no significant difference in mainly characteristic between the total sample and the genetic sample, which indicates that genetic sample were representative of the total sample. Uh, we estimate multivariable linear regression of the following form. The alcohol in, uh, represent individual I alcohol consumption behaviors X, uh, was a series of control variable. MCI is uh, when the individual I is MCI or not. Table 2A and Table 2B reported estimate of alcohol consumption on MCI from the multivariable linear regression on total sample and the genetic sample. From the table 2A, we can see that there was no significant correlation between the three alcohol consumption variable and the risk of MCI in multi multivariable linear regression estimation of the total sample. In order to prove the unbiased selection of the genetic sample, we use the multivariable li linear regression to analyze the genetic sample. We also find none of the key explanatory variable were significantly associated with the risk of MCI, which was consistent with the total sample analysis. We use the two-stage least scores to evaluate the causal relationship between the alcohol consumption and MCI. We prove the ALDH2 genes is an effective instrumental variable through the literature, instrumental variable test, and the gene data database research. Table 3 report MR result by ALDH2 as instrumental variable in genetic sample. Three alcohol consumption variable were correlated associated with a higher risk of MCI. Specifically, parameter estimates for current drinking or not, drinking frequency during the past 30 days, and the weekly asthma consumption were positive and uh, significant at a 5% level. Uh, so that is our study conclusion. We found MR study found the alcohol consumption was correlated associated with the higher risk of MCI in genetic sample. And any amount of alcohol cons 
consumed will increase the risk of MCI. There are also some limitations in our study. The sample size is relatively small because of the predominant portion of the sample in the present study were male due to the regular alcohol drinking is very rare in female, which may decrease the feasibility of the generalizing the result to other populations. It is possible that, that time lag exists between the alcohol consumption and subsequent cognitive change. This means that there were limitations in using alcohol consumption over the past 30 days to access the relationship between the alcohol consumption and the cognitive change. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Any question or suggestion are welcome. If uh, um, can I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I don't know what is your interestment variable. Can you repeat again? Uh, my IV. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, it's a okay. I will try my best because my English is poor. I will try my best to let you know. Maybe we can use Chinese. This is not my problem. That's good. This actually is used a gene gene number. It's your gene point. Then this gene can decide if you can drink alcohol. But it has no impact on my Y. It's through some sources, and then some evidence for the efficiency of the gene testing, and 一个生物学的一个基因数据库，然后通过这三个途径来证明这个基因的有效性，就是这个 IV 对喝酒非常显著，但对我的 Y 没有什么。就是说这个 IV 会影响喝酒，是吗？然后不会影响到你的认知的那个水平，但是这个 IV 能够很完整的反映，因为你的 X 不是。酒酒的消费嘛，嗯，就是他们的相关性很高嘛，因为我感觉这个基因影响的是你能不能喝酒，嗯、或者你会不会和他的消费、嗯，就是你能不能和会不会喝酒和你喝不喝之间、嗯，我感觉好像还有一个 gap， 会吗？我不太确定啊。哦、呃，就是其实就是问题就是这个这个工具变量的有效性，对吧？对对对。对就是目前我做的那个工具变量有效性都是通过了的，就是没有太大问题。好的，好的，谢谢，谢谢。啊，啊，就我想问一下，咱们这个基因是当时做那个，就是做调查的时候收集的吗？还是？对，就是我们。在调查的时候问完问卷，然后会让农户签一个知情同意书，然后测一下他的基因，就是就是一个，就是现在有挺多这样的华大呀，还有我们用的是微基因，就是一个试管，然后让他吐进去一毫升的唾液，然后你给基因公司邮寄过去就行了。哦，微基因竟然可以测到那个基因 ，OK OK， 是的。<笑>我以为只能测到什么喝酒脸不脸红什么的，其实喝酒脸不脸红就是你基因决定的。哦、oh, ，OK， 谢谢，不客气。那下一个，<笑>下一个就是我了。<笑> OK，Let、okay, me share my screen。嗯。Um, hello, everyone. My name is Lei Xinyuan, a student from Renmin University. It's my honor to be here for today's presentation. Our paper is Richer and Healthier Social Pensions and Unhealthy Consumption Behavior in China. And as we know, China's aging problem has becoming more and more outstanding nowadays. There are nearly 176 million population over 65 years old and more than 60% of them live in rural areas. In order to guarantee this elderly 
its life, uh, China's government promoted the new rural pension scheme, which is also named after an RPS. Um, this this picture shows the um, some introduction about this uh, scheme. As we can see, that only the um, elderly who is older than sixty years old can receive the pension, and the pension receiving uh, and the pension. Uh, comes from two sources. One is uh, individual account and the other is social pooling account. Uh, so uh, once a county was covered as a pilot of an RPS, uh, only the elderly who is older than 60 years old will directly get a 55 yuan fixed fee per month because their individual account is zero. Uh, yeah, and uh, RPS is a very important regulation in China, so lots of scholars um, evaluate different aspects of its impact. However, um, a la a few literature focus, uh, focus, focused on the unintended shock of an RPS, such as unhealthy consumption. So this paper tried to answer the question, how an RPS affect unhealthy consumption behavior in China? And for Surly, we um, set a theoretical framework. As you can see here, um, we said that uh, each elderly have two parts of their utility. One is the present utility, it's UXZ, and the other is the future uh, utility, it's VI. The present uh, utility, UXZ, is contained of two parts. One is um, X. Uh, which is stands for the uh, consumption quantity of unhe unhealthy good, and the uh, Z, which is stands for the uh, normal good consumption. After some calculation, we can um, derive this: uh, the sign of partial X divided into partial I uh, has two parts, uh, uh, which have different um, sign direction. So the over overall effect of the um, additional income to uh, unhealthy consumption is ambiguous. And uh, we do some further calculation. We have a life expectancy effect. A positive income shock is more likely to decrease the consumption of the unhealthy good for a consumer with longer life expect expectation. Uh, in order to prove our uh, theoretical framework, we use the data of trials uh, covering the years of the 2011 to the 2018, four years. And we did some um, basic data claim, including excluding the samples that received other pensions and uh, uh, excluding the samples with missing member variables like this. Uh, we use the method is uh, the, the, the method we use is um, fuzzy RD. The assignment variable is age and the treatment variable is whether receiving pension. And this method can help us to avoid self-selection problem and omitted variables. Um, actually, uh, most paper discussed the impact of an NRPS while using this method. Yeah, it's a very common method in uh, evaluating the impact. Um, as you can see in this picture, there is a very clear jump in the proportion receiving a pension from the age of uh, 60.25, uh, suggesting that the RD design of this study is proper. And this is the basic um, data description of our study. Uh, the pension. The variable pension is stands for the pension participation, and uh, uh, par sorry, this is the pension receiving. And uh, uh, our main uh, outcome variables, including four variables, firstly is the smoking, um, means uh, whether the individual is a smoker, and QCIG stands for the number of cigarettes smoked per day, and PCIG is price of cigarettes per, per pack. Uh, each pack have 20 cigarettes and ECIG expenditure on cigarettes consumption per day. And there are some uh, channel variables, including a transfer and some food expense experience uh, and some food expense. And uh, we have the gender and marriage, the two control variables. This is our basic um, baseline result of the pool sample. As you can see that um, on average, an RPS receiving will reduce the problem 
probability of cigarette smoking and the uh, number of cigarettes smoked will re uh, reduce. And then we restrict the sample into the smoker sample. We can see that uh, there are still a reduction after receiving um, an RPS and the uh, quantity almost the uh, five cigarettes reduction. There are some small uh, adding of the price of cigarettes after receiving the pension. And uh, in order to connect with our uh, theoretical framework, we also do a heterogeneity of the life expectancy. As you can see that uh, for the rural elderly who have a long life expectancy, a smoking ratio, number of cigarettes consumed and expenditure on cigarette consumption are significantly reduced as a result of the pension receiving. However, uh, the same um, outcome cannot be found in short life expectancy. And we also try to find some channel um, of our outcome. Uh, we use the income effect and the substitution effect, try to explain the channel. And only the income effect uh, is significant, uh, which means that uh, when uh, elderly have the, uh, received the pension, it will um, increase, the, increase his chance for nearly 1,000 yuan. And the sub substitution effect is not very um, significant. Uh, we also do some robustness to check. Uh, firstly, it's about the density test of assignment variables. Its age, uh, you can see there is no significant discontinuity in the density distribution of the assignment variable at the cutoff point, 60.25. There are some uh, robustness check about the control variables. As you can see, there are no significant results shows that our um, control variables are not um, discontinuity at our uh, cutoff age. And finally, we do a parametric RD estimation using the two SLS um, to do the same uh, to to try to. Uh, to try to answer the same question. As you can see, the um, qu quantity of the cigarettes and the smoking ratio um, is uh, almost the same of our non-parametric RD estimation. And <clears throat> for, uh, in, in conclusion that uh, an IPS participation decreases the probability of smoking and the number of the cigarettes smoked especially for smokers whose cigarette consumption has been reduced nearly five cigarettes per day. And we do the heterogeneity and analysis. And this reduction is more um, obvious in the sample with longer life expectancy. And the, the increasing transport income is the main channel uh, of our outcome. There are many, um, uh, there are some <laughs> limitations of our uh, research. Um, for example, uh, if there exists some pure effects, uh, because uh, the, as the elderly are likely to follow others' um, behaviors, maybe we will uh, underestimate the effect of an IPS. And secondly, uh, our results should be interpreted very um, uh, with caution and um, because the main sample studied only includes participants in the age range of um, 50.25 to the 70.25 years old. It's not a very um, big sample. And thirdly, our results just discuss whether receiving an RPS how to affect unhealthy behavior, lack of discussion about the influence of extent of an RPS money. Yeah, this is my um, presentation. Thank you very much. Um, how to finish my... Yeah, okay.
can I have a question? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay, so um, I'm curious about how do you define the short or long uh, life expectancy for an individual? Oh, okay. Um, this is a this is a question of the child's, and uh, uh, the question will ask you how um, how many years you think you can live. Um, so it's like it's you... a subjective. Uh, it's not an um, it's an objective or subjective, but but it's a it's a self report life expectancy. Uh, it's a subjective answer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, we we define that if they think they can uh, live for that more than ten years is long life expectancy. Oh no no, how to say? I can use Chinese. Can I speak Chinese? Okay okay. Oh, he is. He in that question. He has that. 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 He 嗯哦，所以它就是一个自评的一个预期的寿命，其实对对对对对，嗯嗯，好的，对，是是这样的，嗯Okay, hello everyone. I'm Yu Luyun, a PhD student of China Ac Academy for Rural Development, Zhejiang University. Today, my research topic is information and the consumer diet preference in China. Unhealthy diet has become a leading factor for death and disability globally. And in China, there exist significant gaps between the current Chinese diet and the healthy diets. As a result, China has become one of the countries with highest rates of diet-related cancer deaths and disability adjusted of life years. This health burden would in turn reduce human capital and threaten life expectancy. In response to these challenges, transforming the Chinese diet to a healthy one is critical and urgent. Many scholars found that health information had a significantly positive effect on consumers' preference for certain healthy food. However, how health information affects individuals' choices of a diet remains unexplored. Therefore, to fill the gap, our study focuses on diet instead of a specific food category. The selection of a diet is consistent with real-world shopping situation, where consumers purchase many food items as a package. In addition, the overall quality of a person's diet has greater impact on health than any single food or nutrient. The, the comparison of, for the efficacy of different frame information has important implication for information-based policy design and implementation of public health policies. Therefore, this paper designed different information treatments and comparing their effectiveness at promoting healthy diets among Chinese consumers. The from the exam, exam the from the study, we make a research hypothesis based on the previous studies. This study 
employs a between subject design, participants were randomly assigned into one of the nine groups as shown in figure. Group one is a control group without any information. Group two and group three provide individuals with the health information without any source. And the health information is positively framed in group two and negatively in group three. Group four and group five provide individuals the health information from the scientific association. Group six and group seven provide the same information as group four and five, but presented by social media interface. Group eight and nine give respondents information from celebrity. Here are some health information examples. In this slide, the left is positive information and the right is negative information. And in this slide, the left one is information without source and the right one is information from scientific source. And next, the left information is presenting in journal pattern and the right and the right is presenting in social media. And in this slide, the left is from scientific source and the right information is from celebrity, both presenting in social media interface. Um, we use choice experiment to explore Chinese consumers' diet choices. Three attributes are included in our experimental design, namely cost of diet, taste, and diet types. They were selected following the literatures about healthy food choices. We use generators to create a practical set of six selection tasks. Each selection task consists of four alternatives and one opt-out option. Figure below shows an example um, selection scenario faced by consumers where each picture can be enlarged. We use random parameter logic model to estimate consumer preferences. The utility derived by individual N choosing alternative J in cho choice situation T can be expressed as follow. Our survey was conduct conducted in August 2021 by a professional survey company to qualify our survey. Participants must have been 18 years old and be the primary food decision maker in the household. This table report, reports the estimate of random parameter logic model. As conjecture, the result suggested that types of diet, diet cost and diet taste all significantly affect consumers' diet selections with ex, ex, with ex expected signs of all coefficients, whether consumers reviews information on, or not. Then we compare consumers' willingness to pay in different groups. This table presents the estimated result of unconditional willingness to pay, and the next table presents the conditional willingness to pay together with the standard errors, as well as a t-task to compare group one to each treatment group. Both tables showed that information plays an important role in increasing consumers' sensitivity to health diets, which confirms hypothesis one. In addition, we used the following regression model to explore the effects of different framed information on urban Chinese consumers' diet selections. Where cheat one to five, um, were set as dummy variables. We, we estimate models excluding other control variables and including other control variables respectively. We found that the estimated result is robust. We focused on the estimation result of model two. In terms of hypothesis two, which forks on the information content, it can be found that negative, negative information significantly increase consumers' willingness to pay for healthy diets, while positive 
information decrease. In terms of hypothesis three, which works on the information source, we can it can be found that when the information are noted with source, whether scientific source or celebrity source, consumers' willingness to pay for each diet increase about 100 yuan. Specifically, consumers are more likely to adopt the suggestion from celebrity, although the information received is completely same. In terms of hypothesis four, which focuses on the information presentation pattern, this study finds that consumer willingness to pay significantly reduced when the information is presented to consumers through social media interface. Finally, we use the similar model to further explore the effects of information on consumers with different income. This table reflects the estimated result. We can find from the coefficient of income that when consumers don't receive any information, consumers with high income are significantly inclined to choose healthy diet. According to the coefficient of interaction term, we can find that the effectiveness of negative information or information from scientific association decrease with increasing income. So uh, there is our conclusion. First, information plays an important role in improving consumer healthy diet awareness and increasing their sensitivity, sensitivity to healthy diet. Second, Chinese consumers are more responsive to negative information or health threats compared to positive information. Third, when information is noted with source, consumers' willingness to pay significantly increased. Whether the information is from scientific association or celebrities, specifically, consumers are more inclined to trust celebrities. Fourth, when the information presented to consumers through social media or interface, consumers' willingness to pay significantly reduce. Fifth, compared to compared with high income groups, it is more effective to implement information intervention to low income groups. And that's all for today. Thank you for your listening. Any suggestions will be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Um, do you have any questions? If there are no other questions, I will finish there. Thank you again. Hi, um, I'm just curious about the next presenter. Um, I oh. think this presentation was the fourth one. Um, and I'm not sure I'm presenting the last, but I'm not sure if the fourth, like the fifth one, the fifth presenter is here. Um, yes, I'm the fifth one, but um there uh the first one and the um, fourth one, they are not come to the Zoom, Zoom meeting. So I, I became the third one. Okay. So. Um, then as I'm here, uh, would you, do you guys mind if I present now um, and wait for the other presenters if they come? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your great presentation. Just let me share my screen. Um, start the video. Screen. Um, okay. 
Yeah, can you see the screen? Um, yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, hello, I'm Goli, a PhD candidate in UC Davis. Uh, today, I'll present my joint work with Professor Tim Biddy at UC Davis, the impact of wildfire on farm worker labor. Um, prior work have extensively studied the effect of natural disasters on agriculture production, but the effects on agriculture workers are largely understudied. Um, to fill this gap, we ask, how did wildfire smoke affect agricultural labor during California's unprecedented 2020 wildfire season? We study California because it has more farm workers than any other states. Uh, roughly half of them are undocumented, who may face increased risks from wildfire due to poverty and limited access to health care. Moreover, farm worker, uh, California suffers persistently from agricultural labor shortages and wildfire seems likely to worsen this labor shortage problem. We use individual level salesman tracking data and estimate changes to agricultural labor in response to wildfire. Agricultural workers are hard to track and survey because most of them are undocumented and many are seasonal workers who work at multiple sites over a growing season. Most of what we know about agricultural workers comes from surveys, which has a limitation in that we know about workers just at a point in time and many questions have retrospective components. Our real time and high frequency in cell phone tracking data gives us a unique opportunity to understand farm workers' labor change under wildfire smoke exposure using thousands of individuals over thousands of fields. So what do we do in this paper? We start by estimating changes to agricultural labor in response to wildfire smoke by choosing not to work or work less hours. Are farm workers less likely to work when they're is smoke and whether the response differ across the type of tasks. And do farm workers work fewer hours in smoky days? We extend the question by exploring farm workers adaptation strategies from the perspective of substitution across space and time. Uh, we conducted analysis and find evidence that farm workers redistribute efforts over space and time by working in a field with relatively low smoke density and work more in days leading up to and the days following the wildfire event. But as we have limited time today, I will only present the analysis for the first and the second question, extensive and intensive margin analysis. In the slide, you can see a picture of cell phone tracking location information of one individual in one day in one field. The blue dots record the location of one individual's movement over a day in a field. So we aggregate this information into one individual's observation in a day. Uh, for example, when we analyze whether farm workers are less likely to go to work on smoky days, these 26 dots will be aggregated into one observation of Jane Doe, who went to work in Strawberry Field 1 in 2020, August 10th. Let's zoom out from the individual location data and see where our samples appear throughout California. What you're seeing on the left is the field that farm workers work in, uh, in our sample work. We observe a worker in about 38% of all California's crop fields during the sample period. As you can see, the fields in the sample are evenly specially distributed throughout California. Researchers have worked with individual farms to obtain high frequency data on worker behavior, but increased detail usually come at the cost of limited actionability while studying only one agriculture facility or field. By using cell phone tracking data, we could overcome some of the difficulties that existing studies often face. And the left figure shows NOAA's way of contouring areas that are covered with three different levels of smoke densities. NOAA retrieves near real-time satellite observation of smoke plume images. An expert image analyst at NOAA processed the smoke plume image from satellite into 
georeferenced polygon data that can be specially joined to individual fields. Um, and we combine data from a variety of sources. We use location tracking data from more than 400 mobile applications from January 1st to October 13 in 2020. Um, we combine this data with statewide crop mapping data that has information on field boundaries and crops to figure out farm workers. We classify a device that belong to farm worker in a given month using several criteria. Individuals should be found in an agriculture field as defined by statewide crop mapping during working hours. And workers should appear in crop fields more than five times in a month. Also, they should move slower than five meters per second to avoid counting vehicle as an individual. Um, and for the independent variable, we get wildfire smoke polygon data, as I just showed you in previous slide from NOAA's hazard mapping system, which gives information on smoke covered area from wildfire. Uh, in our paper, we do have analysis using both smoke and PM, but as we have limited time today, I will just focus on explaining the research design and reporting results for smoke analysis. Um, to identify the cultural impact of smoke exposure, we use plausibly exogenous variation in wildfire smoke as measured by smoke plumes. In terms of estimation, we start with extensive margin analysis using the linear probability method, where the dependent variable work is a binary variable. It is one if individual works in her model day in day T and zero otherwise. Um, smoke is measured in three densities, light, medium, and heavy, following the definition of NOAA. We also include a rich set of weather controls and fixed effects such as month, weekend, and individual level fixed effects. For intensive margin analysis, we use fixed effect cause our maximum likelihood fossil model that accounts for non-negative and discrete nature of the data. Work hours uh, indicate an individual eyes working hours in field F and JD here. What I'm showing you on the left most slide is the result of whether farm workers go to work um, uh, work more or not on smoky days. And on the middle is the result of whether farm workers work more hours on smoky days. On the last is the result of heterogeneous response estimation across farm workers working in more labor intensive crop fields and relatively less labor intensive crop fields. Uh, interestingly, we find that farm workers are mitigating their exposure to smoke either by going to work or work were not going to work, were working fewer hours in smoky days. As you may already notice, farm workers tend to work less and fewer hours as smoke gets denser. One thing to note is that the wide confidence interval in the case of heavy smoke is because of small sample size. There are only 0.02% um, farm workers and days experience with heavy smoke during the sample period. The effects are larger for farm workers who work in more labor intensive crop fields, such as strawberry crop fields, uh, grapes, and apple crop fields, showing more than 10 percentage points reduction uh, when there's heavy, uh, in the probability of going to work when there's heavy smoke. Um, this makes sense when we imagine strawberry pickers who are directly exposed to smoke may go to work less compared to tractor drivers in a cornfield who are protected from smoke by driving inside an enclosed tractor. Um, in summary, by using cell phone tracking data, which is a useful tool to investigate worker behavior among a hard to survey population, we find that the effects of wildfire on farm workers' labor. We find that uh, smoke significantly reduces working days and hours, and we additionally find the evidence of substitution over space and time. Thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions or more, uh, comments for the remaining time. Um, and if you have additional questions or comments, please send me an email to the email address in the presentation slide.
Thank you. Yeah, do you have any questions? Uh, no, thank you for thank you for your presentation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to ask that the cell phone tracking data is mean you collect the data um, many times through the phone? Yes, that's right. Um, when you join a certain app, you get a message that, uh, do you agree with the location tracking um, data? Then if you agree that um, agreement, then they, um, a certain app collect your location information throughout time. And that's the data that I'm using. Oh, 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 you can get uh, where they go. Yeah, yes, <laughs> that's they, right. Yeah, where, where, how, yeah, movement data of people, yes. Well, it's, it's a very large, big, uh, very large database, I think. Yes, actually, I had to process from like more than one terabyte data and make it to like a convert it to smaller data. So yeah, it was very oh. data heavy. <laughs> yeah, data intensive oh. work, yes. Well, it's a very good data. <laughs> yes, thank you. Yeah, it's just, yeah, luckily my, um, um, my advisor had the data so I could um, use it for my research, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Oh, okay. And, and use this data, the location, you can match it to the individuals, uh, match to the crop field. So you, you know whether they are working in the field. Yes, that's right. Just uh, as I, I'm just interested in the behavior of farm workers, not all individuals, like general population. Mm -hmm. So oh. I, yeah, yeah, match it to crop fields and if farm markers appear crop fields more than like, I used many criteria to sort out, like filter out general population to farm workers. Like if they showed up more than five times in working hours uh, to a crop field, then I classified that individual as a uh, farm worker. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for thank our you. presentation and your answer. Yeah, thank you for your question. Yeah.